Hi, my name is Owen, and I'm here to talk about Final Fantasy 16. I want to tell you guys about the good, the bad, and in my opinion, should you buy it? Let's find out. So right off the bat, Final Fantasy 16 is a timed exclusive for PlayStation 5. So for people who are Xbox, PC, Stadia, Steam Deck, blah, 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 all those whatever variations of consoles that you might play, unfortunately, it will not run on your system until next year. At least that's when the time exclusivity ends. Or until, or maybe sooner. I want to say so, maybe sooner. But in any event, Sony went ahead and put a time exclusivity. They probably paid Square Enix like uh, the wazoo just to keep it exclusive for a year. And for Sony's business, for their practice to do this, it's great. I think this is a, a knock out the ballpark move for Sony. In terms of Sony. Now, if I was Square Enix, and knowing Square Enix, especially after the disaster of Forspoken, I genuinely would have made this all platform. I would have not even signed an exclusivity or whatever, whatever, whatever. But see, I'm sure Sony had a large check to give to Square Enix and said, hey, you want to just let us have it for the year? And they probably didn't, you know, they couldn't give them an offer they couldn't refuse. So I don't blame uh, Square Enix or Creative Assembly is our great business assembly three i don't blame them at all for taking them but do i think that in terms of square enix for their business practices being able to hit their numbers uh for the game since since you're already uh cutting like half of your player base that could buy it yeah i think that's a bad move for for square enix but again for sony this is a massive this is something that's going to make the PlayStation relevant for like the next two months or something. Depends on who plays it for that long. Or more, more. So that's something that I'm really, I'm really happy about for Sony. Is that Sony is able to make this exclusivity for them. And probably rake in as much as they can out of this game before anybody else can. But here's the thing. The reason why I think, again, the reason why I'm saying these things is because the game is good. If this game sucked, I would have not even addressed this time exclusive. I wouldn't even have cared, all right? But because the game is good, because the graphics are great, because it's well written, because the voice acting is doing is well, because the setting is, oh, I love the setting. I love mid, I love older medieval kind of feeling games where there's no, you know, crazy machina because that's basically like the new, the new uh, futuristic uh, tech technology that Final Fantasy has is, is Machina, but for me, when, when we went back to uh, like Final Fantasy 9, when we just went back to square roots, Final Fantasy, old school, medieval, renaissance status, that is my favorite setting, that's my favorite time of play, like my favorite theme, all right, I, I'm, I love, I love it when it goes old school, and you don't have to rely on crazy skyscrapers and blah, and don't get me wrong, I actually do like like games that use that, like 10, uh, 12 was another one, uh, definitely 7 and 8. Uh, they were all very Machina-based uh, games using future technology. But, again, I, I just have such a soft spot for like the old school, retro, you know, vintage, going in with, with your blade at hand and your chokeable riding. Like that's, that was, for me, that was, that is the Final Fantasy that I, I got is a real vital fantasy, you know? And thankfully, in terms of like settings, time frame, all that, it, it's exactly what I wanted. And that's just my opinion for me. So I'm, this Final Fantasy is really hitting home for me. Whereas other people might might not like that. In fact, other people would rather prefer the Machina style, the Machina uh, themed Final Fantasies. This is something, in my opinion, I'm very happy this is the direction they went to, right? So now, let's talk about the gameplay. The gameplay is actually very well produced. I love the fact that you can just run up and attack. There's, uh, I'm, I've always been the biggest fan of running up and attacking. I have not been the biggest, like for example, I think the, most, the worst uh, fighting mechanic was Final Fantasy 13. Like when you, like not only were there monsters around but not only, but as soon as it touches you or you get like not even like an inch near it boom random encounter 
And what I also don't like is that, and I understand that there's a lot of combinations and, you know, it gets really complex in some cases. I just am not a big fan of that fighting system. I've never been a fan of that fighting system. I'd rather go back to random encounter, uh, random encounter turn-based style fighting. If, if you were going to make me choose between that and that, of course. But I'm very happy that, that they've, uh, com I think Square Enix has completely abandoned that kind of fighting style of just random encounters and all that, and just going just straight generic walk-up attack, which is something that, again, gameplay-wise, it really uh, resonates with me. Like, this really, this, the, the fighting style, at least in my opinion, it has some resemblance to me, in my opinion, of Final Fantasy XII. Now, is it exactly like Final Fantasy? No, 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 no. It's not even close. It's not even close relatively to to Final Fantasy XII. But there's a lot of mimicking that Final Fantasy sixteen does that twelve does, which is, for example, the running up and attack. You run up, attack monsters, no matter what, if they're anywhere in the area. You have no problem taking them out. I get it that you can in Final Fantasy XII you can stop mid attack and start doing commands like, for example, doing uh, potions and you know doing like a what's it called the the limit break when you get the, the the meters that go up, but you know what I'm talking about. But yeah, but what I love about six, uh, sixteen is that everything is real time. There's no stopping. There's no cut. There's no there's no this. The only time that there is a real uh, break of a real time gameplay immersion, in my opinion, is when they do the cinematic blocks, cinematic attacks, and I guess there's time blocks or time dodges that you can that you do. Uh, when there's a boss that's attacking you. Now, here's the thing. Uh, especially when it comes to, uh, as I kept playing the demo, I realized that there are going to be some abilities uh, that you that you will get, excuse me, that you will get later in the game that you will be able to just block that. Instead of just dodging, you block it. Like, here's a great example. When I ended up beating the demo, it, it took you to... Uh, you unlock another mode. It's at the very end. And as soon as you press that mode, it sends you several hours into the game, like the main game. You're sent several hours into the main game and you are in a, I wanna say you're in a castle or you're like in a fortress or something, but you're in a castle and you're walking, you're running all the way up and fighting all the way up until you get to the to the, the boss lady. She's like, she's like a, a, a winged lady that has like claws and stuff. You know, I mean, it's hard. It's a hard description, especially just saying it now. But let me tell you, for a demo, just a demo, that that boss battle was epic. You know, and I get it. Like I, I, uh, in between the fights, you'd probably stop and go through cutscenes like four times. In in between fights, in between the exact same fight, I mean, in between the exact same fight, you go through like four cutscenes. But it all works well. It blends well. It doesn't just cut and you can note it. Oh my God. Like, no, it doesn't. It, I, I appreciate that very much actually. But that, but again, that's not even why I'm even talking about that. I'm talking about the, the second mode because of the, I, I, they're called Esper or e e Echo Echelons or something like that. I see them as Aeons. I see them as Espers. I see them as Summits. Cause that's all that I've always seen them as when I played all the other Final Fantasies. They have Aeons, everything. You know, they've always been named something. But back to what I was saying. I love that now if you if you do take the powers of one of those uh, summons, espers, aeons, whatever you want to call it, it incorporates into your attacks. So say you switch into, uh, that's what's cool, is that you press the L2 button and you're able to switch your espers or your aeons or whatever, your, your summon guys, and you're able to use your powers as well as you're attacking in real time. So you're able to switch around. Say you're attacking with your sword, you hold R2 and then press the sword, the attack button again, and you automatically do a, a summon attack. And again, it's very well done. Like it doesn't, it doesn't just automatically stop the gameplay and you go to a cutscene because you, you did something for, no, 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 no. It doesn't do any of that no more. See, and that's the thing too, was that beforehand, when you used to summon S summon aeons and all that stuff, um, there would be a massive cutscene. It would break. It, it would uh, cut right into the, uh, to the gameplay, and you'd watch a whole movie for like five seconds, and then the animal, the, animal, the summon comes out, and it either it does its attack or it stays around and starts attacking until it dies. 
but it, but what I do love about 16 is that they just took their attacks, incorporated into the person, and you're able to just straight up attack with it. They are charge meters, so as the charge meter goes, of course you can't do it again, but some are limited. Some are, are limiting, like there's not so much time to wait, and some can be pretty long. But again, when I started playing that mode, there are three um, Aeons or whatever that you can, that you are given. One of them is Phoenix. That's the, that's the beginning, the original one that you start off with. And uh, to be fair, you being the Phoenix I, I was actually more by because your brother is dead. So you are Clive, you are in a family and they're a royal family. I want to say that they they have control powers of the summons because they're in, it's in their blood or whatever, and so this, the youngest son Joshua, Clive is Clive is uh, the oldest, Joshua is his brother, and then they have a stepsister, I forgot her name, but they have but she's a stepsister, but in any event, um, Joshua is the phoenix. He is the chosen one to be the phoenix. What ends up happening is uh, another summon, as, or whatever, I call, I'm just going to call it summons at this point. Another summon came, and he turned into uh, another fire creature. And so some people, they might not know who it is, but for me, I think the second, I already kind of knew what it was, uh, what the creature was. And if I'm not mistaken, it's Ifrit. Uh, Ifrit is also a summon. It's got big, gigantic horns. It looks like a freaking dog human with big-ass guns and stuff. And it usually has a beard or tea or whatever. And it has one famous move, Hellfire. And historically what it does is that it launches a giant fireball, shoots it at you, and as you're struggling with, with uh, you trying to pull back the fireball, Ifrit usually gets a giant piece of rock or something and just throws it at the ball and it blows up and it's massive. Whereas this version of Hellfire was completely different. Um, I, I was actually a little, I was more impressed with the sequence and animations of how the, the magic flew through the, through the screen. Like, that's what really impressed me was that, say, like, you're doing, uh, like, there's an attack, a phoenix attack, when you, when you select the phoenix, uh, Esper, uh, he does, like, a swirl, and he's, like, flaming around. Or the same thing with you, when you switch to the, to the, to the arrow ex Esper, that's the one, I have to remember which, which the name of that one is. But I know it's Phoenix and Titan for sure. The other one I told you, I ain't gonna lie. Gone, the name. But in any event, what I what I, I can say is that if you're able to incorporate all three of them, all three of the summons' powers into your combat, you can honestly be unstoppable. And I will tell you this right now. Titan block, once you get the Titan block, it's the most overpowered thing I've ever seen. Like instead of doing instead of doing cinematic dodges, you know how you press like you're, once you play the game and you get into a cinematic dodge, many times if you just press block the the Titan block, it, it just goes ding automatic blocks it and it just it's just a straight up cheat code. Like I'm I was just blown away because I'm like what the hell it made the game infinitely easier, in my opinion. Uh, and that's another thing I'm gonna uh, get down to as well the game the the difficulty and the enemies, the AI and all that. So the AI, they're not the stupid, they're not stupid. I don't think they're stupid. Do I think that they're just AI that you kill, NPCs that are, they're, they're meant to be killed? Yes. But I think that once we play the game fully and get it uh, on a full release, I feel as though you might be able to do a sneak around or be able to even do uh, an ambush attack, which is something that Final Fantasy 15 was was doing but it wasn't that how do i put this it wasn't implemented that well is what i should say but i think that this gameplay in this game i believe that they might emphasize more on stealth just based on the gameplay that i played but that's all speculation i could be entirely wrong about that. now in terms of the bad there's only very minor gripes like, the biggest one for me, and this is because I'm such a detailist, like, that's, this is just my own gripe, is when you play the character and you move, and he's moving around, running around, okay, 
and you swirl them around like you like just have them do donuts like real tight donuts he's literally looking like he's lifting off the ground floating in midair so it makes it look like i'm playing again final fantasy 12 from ps2 in terms of the movement of the legs like and anim walking animation and that's again if I have to say that the walking animation is probably the worst thing of this game, that should tell you something. That this game is pretty good. Almost, like, phenomenal. Alright? But that's definitely, like, for me, was the only thing that was kind of annoying. Was just seeing the just his movement of walk. Like, his gait animation. It's just... It's, it, 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 it doesn't make sense in a way. But... It's very reminiscent to the same movement that I had and the same complaints that I had in Final Fantasy VII Remake. That's it. I mean, they both basically kind of control the exact same way. To a degree. But again, I'm not going to give this game and this game a lot of gripe because 98% of it is phenomenal. Whereas the 2%, it's, it's like mid. It's not even bad. It's just mid. So... There you go. Now, another thing that I kind of say I don't like about the game as well is that when I first started playing the game and I and I ended up finishing one of the chapters, I was worried that this might be... <clears throat> and again, this, this in my opinion, this would be a bad if this was completely the way it's going to be played. The fact that once you finished uh, uh, a section in that town or whatever, like you go to Stillwell, that's the first uh, real, like, place that you visit and it's all run down and whatever but still once you finish that you go to a map and there's dot and there's another dot that shows up and then you click on that dot and it teleports you there and then the cutscenes happen blah, blah 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 okay me i don't want that i don't want that at all i don't want i don't want it to be like the legend of dragoon status when you guys are when it's doing like a whole like paper like you know a whole mars uh, mario world when you're just walking through dots and then boom, you you know go to the next. No, I I do not want that at all. I want a walking around open world Final Fantasy sixteen game. And if and if if the but I will tell you this, if the compromises to have a excellent Final Fantasy sixteen game has to be no open world and keeping it like episodic like how how it was, then I will have to just live with that. If I know that the Final Fantasy sixteen that I'm getting is going to be this quality, like I just saw in the demo. And I just have, and the only big flaw is me not being able to do fully open world expansions. Because I'm sure, like, once you click on the, on the on the actual area, I'm sure the area is open area. Like, the whole area is open world. But once you get to, like, a certain border, it probably tells you, would you like to return to the map? And then you probably will teleport other places. Again, that's something that I really don't want. I'd rather it to be more like, a, again, much like Final Fantasy 16, 15, or 12, or... Any of, any of the open world games, you just run around and get to the location or drive or whatever you have to do, take a job or whatever. But those are probably the two biggest gripes that I have is just one, no real open world expansiveness that you were able to, uh, to fulfill or feel. And number two, just the walking and gate animation of how, of how the character moves. Other than that, the game is, I, wanna, I don't want to say perfect, but God, it is good. It's definitely a 9 out of 10. The demo is a 9 out of 10 for sure. And, it, and for me, it's hard for me to give something a 10 out of 10 unless it is masterclass, flawless. There is nothing I can pick out that's, hey, this game has this wrong. No, that for me, that's when it's a 10 out of 10. But right now, as from what I've played, it's a 9 out of 10. But I'm going to tell you this. If, if this game came out tomorrow, I will go into debt and buy it because... This is a good game. It's a very good game. And more, most importantly, since I know that you're already going to spend $70 and it's going to be an, a rather expansive game, you're going to get your money worth. I mean, you probably can... I mean, I've already got 10 hours of the demo. I played it probably three or four times. No, four times already. Yeah, four times already. I'm telling you. And that's for free. Now imagine you get the full game. You see what I mean? But see, this is exactly why, um, as I was saying earlier in this video, why Sony did a great job making this game a Sony exclusive game. 
because this game will sell consoles. This game will push numbers. This game is going to be the reason why Sony might buy out Square Enix if this works very well for them. I mean, let's let's just face it. But in any event, um, again, my name is Zoa. I'm going to start doing these reviews. Uh, if you guys like it, please give me a like. Please give me a comment. Tell your friends. Tell anybody that, that likes video games. Let them know what's up. Uh, as soon as the game drops, I'm going to definitely buy it. I'm going to definitely play it. And then maybe about... 30 hours into it or once it beat the game i think really once it beat the game um i will give you a, a, a initial review i don't want to give a full review but i want to give an initial review like right now like i'm doing now i'm giving an initial review uh to the to the game even though i've already played it a lot already within within last night and today but uh yes so again if you guys like uh this you guys like the review you guys like uh what i have to say or what i don't have to say please leave in the comment section let's have a chat in the comment section i'd love to talk about people that are very passionate about video games and very passionate about final fantasy 2 just very passionate as a whole as a person you know i like to i like to talk about new people new things and new people with people but in any event um do i recommend 16 final fantasy 16 yes yes go buy it uh would i recommend final fantasy 16 buying it a year later i probably will Honestly, just from the demo alone, I'm sold. I'm 100% sold. And that's the same thing. And even, and here's another thing I, I have to really emphasize. Even if the demo was half of its size, it wasn't like three hours long, two hours long. It was only like 30 minutes long. Just like Final Fantasy, uh, just like, uh, sorry, just like Resident Evil 4, the, the chainsaw demo. I would still buy it. I mean, I bought Re Resident Evil 4 on just a 25 minute demo that blew me away. So there's, you know, if you're giving me a nearly three hour demo, then yeah, I'm probably gonna buy it if I really like it. And I really like it. Now for those, I'm gonna, I wanna warn, uh, give one warning out before you guys buy it. Uh, if you guys are downloading the demo, I ain't gonna lie, just, you're, you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to need like two hours of time just to fully play it and fully um, know what I'm talking, like you know what I'm talking about and you have an understanding of where I'm coming from, because maybe I'm explaining things that are not as cohesive as it should be. Uh, but in any event, if if you play it, please give yourself like two hours of time, maybe a little more. And a lot of reason why is because it's not the gameplay, it's the cutscenes. The cutscenes are long. The cutscenes are like almost the movie long. And I'm all for it. Like some people would be annoyed that, oh my God, I'm playing a 40 hour game and it's like 30 hour working. Content all, 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 all video. No, no, you gotta understand. That's 30 hours of work that was developed by these freaking gaming com gaming developers making art. And it's and in some cases it's very good. So for me, this was great. It was like a great two-hour movie for me. And it's continuing as we buy the game, right? So it's the same thing. As soon as you, you download this game, give yourself two hours. Because you need, you're gonna need it if you really want to sit down and watch this. You can always skip it. You can always skip it. Oh, and another thing I forgot to mention, which I thought was really, really uh, cool and neat and innovative, is uh, in between cutscenes, if you press the the, uh, the 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 select button, I don't know, the middle button, the touchpad. If you touch, if you press the touchpad, it activates uh, time activation information or something like that, and it literally just gives you like a whole bubble. Of, of all these like characters and basically gives you their bio. It gives you all the information about them. And basically what's, rep I wouldn't say that, that what is what represents them in the scene, but just so you have clarification of who they are while they're in the scene. And again, I, in my opinion, I think other games should do that. That's a, I, I thought the way they did the whole information uh, time activation in between cutscenes, or you can even press pause and then press and then press it. It doesn't matter, it'll, tell, it'll still tell you. Just being able to be informed in between cutscenes before the cutscene finishes. It's very, very nice. But um, in any event, so again, I'm going to cut this off now. Um, thank you very much for listening. Uh, as soon as the game comes out, I'm going to drop an uh, initial review on it after I put uh, after I put some time into it. Once I beat the game, then if you guys are really cramming for a review or you want me to do other game reviews, hell, let me know. Put it in the comment section down below. I have no problem uh, doing what I have to do to, show, to tell people if it's a good game or not. Now, for me, if you guys uh, have any advice or have any uh, pointers as to 
making this video better or adding better content to this video, please, please let me know. Uh, other than that, I'm probably going to be making more videos similar to this, maybe sitting down talking. Hopefully I can in, uh, in, in, increment some gameplay to it while I'm talking. And in any, and in any event, uh, just, hey, engage with me, guys. I mean, I appreciate you guys listening, especially if you made it this far. This is a 25-minute chat about Final Fantasy 16. And again, for those who are listening to this, I appreciate you. Thank you very much. Please give it a like, a sub, and just tell your friends about it. Okay? So again, my name is Zoa, and I'm out.